How you spin a story is often more important than the story itself. It's certainly that way in politics. All you have to do is flip through your news channels on your cable box. The same story on Fox is going to look and sound a lot different than it does on MSNBC or CNN. It's kind of like that in the stock market. Negative economic data one week might get a positive price reaction in the, in the market. Investors sometimes translate the weak data into holding back the Fed from hiking further. They call this a bad news is good news scenario. Or just the opposite happens when the data is hotter than expected, stocks head south. The implication being the Fed will translate the hot data into inflation and will slam on the brakes. Suddenly, good news is bad. In a few minutes, we're going to get a break in with the payroll numbers for March. Is good news going to be bad? Bad going to be good? Or will bad news be bad news? Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. Two hundred and thirty six thousand. That was pretty much in line with estimates. But the unemployment rate fell to three point five percent. It's the services sector that's key. Leisure and hospitality were seventy two thousand down from the ninety five average. But we're still two percent below pre pandemic levels. Service jobs are still climbing, and that's probably a negative for this Fed. It's thin trading on Good Friday, only the bond market is open for a shortened session, but already markets are pricing in a higher probability of another Fed hike at the next meeting. We'll see what happens when the big dogs come back on Monday. Look, all in, I'm constructive on this market. I don't deny that we have significant challenges. We have a Fed that is pushing too far. They've already broken a few banks. We have an administration that is more concerned about optics and checking off boxes than serving the American people. Every corner of the planet is a geopolitical hotspot. And finally, we have a debt ceiling confrontation as the president continues to stonewall House Speaker McCarthy on spending. Yeah, I get it. All bad stuff. But when I see that half the financial community is calling for a market crash and yet the slope of the 200-day moving average of the S&P 500 is turning higher, first time in close to a year, maybe, maybe the market knows something. I think we've been in a rolling recession as the economic fallout seems to hit one sector at a time. When tech is falling out of bed, healthcare or some other defensive sector picks up the slack Hence, the positive performance year to date. Maybe, maybe it's a mirage. In six months, we'll know if I'm drinking water or sand. Here's some advice to Fed Chair Jay Powell. I get the fact that the Fed is terrified of repeating the mistakes of the 70s and early 80s. Back then, Chairman of the Fed Arthur Burns was running an, ex an expansionary policy to combat rising unemployment. They eased financial conditions too soon, and inflation came roaring back. The 70s and early 80s, that was a dark time for the nation and investors. You had two major oil price shocks. The first was the OPEC oil embargo, triggered by U.S. support for Israel during the Yom Kippur War. The second was the Iranian Revolution in 1979. I think today's inflation is a bit different. Today's inflation was caused by massive liquidity injections and out-of-control government spending. M2 money supply ballooned higher and now, of course, is falling year on year. What makes this different is the following. In addition to all of the, all of the above, we had massive supply shocks coming out of COVID. Remember those shots of ports with ships lined up as far as the eye could see, all waiting to dock and unload? That's gone. Our biggest ports of entry like L.A., Long Beach, New York, and New Jersey, they're wide open. According to Kip Laudit, executive director at the Marine Exchange of Southern California, there's been no backup off of Los Angeles and Long Beach since November last year. 
odds of a quarter point hike are now 65%, and that's up from 50 earlier in the week. Jay, give it a rest. The market is already pricing in cuts later this year. I'm not sure you should do that, but I am certain you should pause at the intersection and look both ways before getting slammed by another economic crisis. Look, if the inflation data stops going down, hit the brakes again. I'll be in your corner. The saying goes, the Fed hikes until something breaks. Well, something broke. Take a break before you break something even bigger. Thanks for joining. I'm David Nelson.